Let A, B, C, D be a parallelogram such that the coordinates of a three vertices A, B, C are 1, 1, 3, 4 and minus 2, 8 respectively. Then the coordinates of the vertex D are nice. Then 1, 1, so A, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, minus 2, 8, see somewhere here. This is a parallelogram. So it goes like this, like this. It should be D. This is A, B, C somewhere there, and it should be D. Uh, how do we do this? We know these two lines are parallel. We know these two lines are parallel. So find slope of A B and B C. A B slope should be same as C D. B C slope should be same as A D. Uh, let's find slope of AB, y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1, 4 minus 1 by 3 minus 1, this is 3 by 2, CD should be 3 by 2, I'm guessing this is minus 2, should be minus 4 or minus 5, minus 3, one of these two, I'm going for that, I'm plumping for one of those two. So minus 4 comma 5, suppose we put D is minus 4 comma 5, C is minus 2 comma 8, D is minus 4 comma 5, slope is 8 minus 5 by minus 2 minus minus 4, 2, yes this works, these two slopes are equal, now we need to do the other slope, before that we can find this, minus 3 comma 4, minus 2 comma 8 and minus 3 comma 4, slope would be 4 by 1, so this doesn't work, we can go for this as answer. It looks from the diagram, it's going to be like that. I'm, going to, I'm backing my diagram drawing skills. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't pay off. Sometimes just plonking in coordinate slope of AB, slope of BC, slope of CD. We don't need to find, we can't find CD, AB and BC. Then find AD and, and CD and then see if the slopes are equal, algebraically solve it or go from choices. Minus 4, 5 should work. Slope of BC. BC, this slope, 3, 4 and minus 2, 8, 8 minus 4 is 4, minus 2, minus 3 is minus 5. Slope of AD is 1, 1, 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 by minus 5. Yep, that also works, this is the answer. Going from answer choices, after drawing a diagram, doing some nuance. You can substitute that as P, Q, slope of AB equal to slope of CD, slope of BC equal to slope of AD. You can solve algebraically get that or you can plonk in from answer choices or you can visualize the diagram and plonk the better and better looking answer choices. 0, 11 is going to be somewhere here. That doesn't work. 4, 5 that side won't work. One of these two this works with. The number of ways of distributing 20 identical balloons among four children such that each child gets some balloons but no child gets an odd number of balloons. Nice. 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. All four are even numbers. Add all this up, get 20. Or A plus B plus C plus D is 10. A, B, C, D are number of balloons and each child gets some number of balloons. That is, nobody gets zero. So natural numbers, four natural numbers adding up to 10, which is 9C3. 9 into 8 into 7 by 1 into 2 into 3, which is 3. 12 into 7, 84. Done. How this is 8, 9C3 that you should know. Should, should have done enough practice to make sure that some of our natural numbers adding to 10, non-ordered quadruplets. How many are there? A mixture contains lemon juice and sugar syrup in equal proportion. So, 1 by 2 lemon juice or 1 by 2 sugar syrup. A new mixture is created by adding this mixture and sugar syrup in the ratio 1 is to 3. I'm going to call it 1 by 2 sugar syrup mixed with 1 sugar syrup in the ratio 1 is to 3. In the ratio of lemon juice and sugar syrup with a new mixture. This is half sugar syrup to 1 sugar syrup mixed with the ratio 1 is to 3. Half plus 3, this is 3 and a half, 7 by 2 by 4. This becomes 7 by 8 sugar syrup. What am I doing? Half into 1 plus 1 into 3 divided by 4, weighted average of these two. We get 7 by 8 sugar syrup. That means in this mixture, 7 8 the sugar syrup or 1 unit lemon juice and 7 units sugar syrup. Lemon juice 
two sugar syrup ratios, one is to seven, done. Simple weighted average question, nothing more than that. For natural numbers x, y, and z, if x, y plus y, z is 19 and y, z plus z, x is 51, y into x plus z is 19 and z into x plus y is 51. We told very clearly that x, y, and z are natural numbers. 19 can only be broken as 1 into 19 or 19 into 1. It cannot be 19 into 1. x plus z cannot be. x plus z is 19 y is 1. Plug that in here. So z into x plus 1 is 51. This is not 51 into 1 x cannot be 0. Not 1 into 51 x is not 50 that we know. 3 into 17 17 into 3 x plus z is 19. So x z into x plus 1 this could be 17 into 2 plus 1, 17 plus 2 is 19, that works, you put z as 3, x equal to 16, then x plus z is 19, 3 into 17 also works. So we could have a scenario where y is 1, x is 2, z is 17, or y is 1, x is 16, z is 3. So, this is 17 into 3 or 3 into 17. Both ways it works. So, it adds, it could be x, z is 17, x is 2 could work or x is 16, z is 3 could work. Minimum possible value of x, y, z multiply this is 48, this is 34. Product is lower in this case which is 34. Lovely. Done. Let A, B, C be non-zero real numbers such that P square less than 4AC and f of x equal to AX square plus BX plus C. Beautiful. AX square plus BX plus C is f of x and B square is less than 4AC. When B square is less than 4AC that means no roots are there. Discriminant is less than zero. The set S consists of all integers M such that f of, f of M is less than zero then the set S must necessarily be a beautiful question. Right? So, I'm going to do this very differently and say let's draw the graph of this. So, y axis and x axis. Ax square plus bx plus c is f of x. It will be a curve and right? it will be a parabola. It will be something like this. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, anywhere. And if it cuts the x axis, then that means f of x goes to 0. That means if I put f of x is equal to 0, I have roots. There is some x for which y equal to 0, f of x equal to 0. But f of x cannot be 0 because this has no real roots. How do I know that? That is given. That means our beautiful looking parabola is got to be something that does not touch the x-axis. It's completely above the x-axis. Which means, if you think about it, what is the set of all integers such that f of m is less than 0? This is less than 0. Never. So set S it should be an empty set. Except, except the curve could be like this or quite brilliantly it could be like this. In which case for all integers it will work or for no integers it will work. So f of m, f of x is either always greater than 0 or is always less than 0. This can never go to 0. It's either always greater than 0 or always less than 0. That means if you put any set of all integers where it will be less than 0, it could be never. In this case, f of m will be never be 0. Set of all integers where it goes to 0 is a null set. In this case, set of all integers where it goes to 0 is all possible integers. So set of all integers or set of, or the empty set, either the empty set or set of all integers. That's the right answer. Absolutely delightful question, especially if we can reframe this as, as, a, as a graph, as a diagram. If you know that A is negative, you have a curve like this. A is positive, you have a curve like this. Ax square plus bx plus c, if A is positive, then the curve is u-shaped. If A is negative, it's parabola shaped, it's, it's umbrella shaped. In both cases it's a parabola. So it's like an umbrella, like an inverted u, it's a u. 
specifically a curve like this has no roots then this curve cannot touch the x-axis that means it is either completely above the x-axis u-shaped or completely below the x-axis umbrella shaped or inverted u-shaped so in this case it will be a null set in this case it will be all sets trains a and b traveling at the same time towards each other with constant speeds from x and y respectively train a reaches y in 10 minutes while train b takes 9 minutes to station reach station x after meeting train a very nice so train a train b train a starts from x train b starts from y okay. train a goes like this train b goes like this somewhere they meet right train a total time taken by train a is 10 minutes train b is not 9 minutes for the total distance but 9 minutes to reach this for the remaining distance this is 9 minutes remaining distance is 9 minutes nice let's say train b has traveled t minutes to get to this point t minutes to get to that point and then 9 minutes to reach the remaining to get to this point train b takes t minutes train a should have also taken exactly t minutes why train a and train b meet at that point they start at the same time meet somewhere let's say they meet after t minutes yes good after which train a goes on to b uh, goes on to y train b goes on to x this time is 9 minutes these two times taken should be equal why they meet at that point what is this time taken this is 10 minus t nice after this we are done how are we done t by 9 equals 10 minus t by t a travels this distance in t minutes b travels this distance in t minutes and so the, this, the ratio of their speeds is the same it should be the ratio of their times so t minutes a takes to travel b takes 9 minutes for it 10 minus t minutes b takes to travel a takes to travel b takes t minutes for it or ratio of the time taken should be the same t by 9 equals 10 minus t by t t square equals 9t minus 9t t square plus 9t minus 9t equal to 0 15 into 6 is 90 t minus 6 into t plus 15 is 90 is 0 or t could be minus 15 that's not possible or 6 minutes this is 6 minutes this is 6 minutes this is 4 minutes 4 by 6 is 6 by 9 we are through let's look at this then the total time taken in minutes by train b to travel from station y to x is 6 plus 9 15 minutes the time taken by to travel by a reached to time taken to travel by b is the same as long as the distance is the same this by this equal to this by this plonk in that ratio of here through the average of three integers is 13 when a natural number n is included the average of these four integers remains an odd integer nice three integers is 13 let's say i1 i2 i3 average is 13 a fourth number comes i4 average remains an integer if fourth number were 13 average would be 13 fourth number is more than 13 average will increase fourth number is less than 13 average will decrease it remains an integer so excess brought in by the fourth number should be equally distributable across these fellows that means whatever i bring more from i4 i can distribute across all four if it has to remain an integer i can add 1 1 1 1 or i4 could have brought 4 more than 13 if i4 brings 13 overall average is 0 sorry overall average is unchanged 13 if i4 brings 17 it will become 14 if it becomes 21 it will become 15 four more average will go up by one another four more average will go up by one more the average of these four integers remains an odd integer so it's not just four more i should bring eight more 21 29 37 all of these the average will go from 13 15 17 
the minimum possible value of n is 21 we'll take it to 15 the question says that it remains an odd integer but hey it's not saying the integer is the average has increased but brought lesser also but 9 oops if i4 brings 9 average will become 12 if i4 become brings in 5 average will become 11 if it brings in 1 average will become 10 you cannot bring in less than 1 with the average of three integers natural number the fourth one is i4 fourth integer is a natural number you cannot bring less than this it's an odd integer so hey i should not include these numbers so you can bring in 5 and the average could go to 11 the minimum possible value of n or i4 is 5 they're effectively saying 39 plus n by 4 is equal to an integer it's an odd integer 39 plus 1 by 4 is 10 doesn't work 39 plus 5 by 4 is 11 that works we are through that's all we are doing nothing nothing more than that pinky is standing in a queue at a ticket counter suppose the ratio of the number of persons standing ahead of pinky to the number of persons standing behind her in the queue is 3 is to 5 this pinky the queue is this way 3x people ahead of her 5x behind her total number of people in the queue is less than 300 so total number of people is 8x plus 1 8x people plus 1 is less than 300 what are the maximum possible number of persons standing ahead of pinky very regular question 300 divided by 8 long 13 goes 3 times 24 67 times 56 so we could have 297 people the maximum which is the form 8x plus 1 in which case 296 into 3 by 8 what this will be 296 by 8 is 37 37 into 3 is 111 it should be 185 add this up it gets 296 plus 1 297 that works anything more is not possible 111 this, this question drove me mad this question drove me mad properly when i tried solving it i thought i was kept looking for cute methods they just they just weren't there right? let's attack this and if ankita buys four kilograms of cashews and peanuts she buys 14 and almonds she buys six kgs of The cost of 7 kilograms of cashews, 7C, is equal to 30P, 30 kilograms of peanuts, equal to 9 kilograms of almonds. She mixes all the three nuts and marks the price for the mixture in order to make a profit of 1752. And 1752 is the profit she wants to make. How many kilograms she has? 4 plus 14 plus 6, 18 plus 6, 24 kilograms. And she wants to make a profit of 1752. That much, that much profit, that much money she wants to make. Which is rather nice. She sells 4 kilograms of the mixture at this mark price and the remaining at a 20% discount on mark price. That's making a profit of 744. She wants profit of 1752. She gets a profit of 740. So she falls short. Why? Because she's not selling the whole thing at some rate. She's selling 20%. She sells 4 kilograms at this price and remaining at a 20% discounted mark price. And that delta is 1008. Totally there are 24 kilograms. Remaining 20 kilograms, she sells at a discount of 20% of mark price. That will be her de deficit shortfall. So 20 kilograms and 20% discount of market mark price gives us 1008. So let's find mark price from here. 20 into 20% 20 of mark price equal to rupees 1008. Mark price per kilogram of the mixture. That's what we know. 20 is 1 by 5. This is 4 times mark price equals rupees 1008. 502 by divided by 2 is 504, 252 or mark price per kilogram is rupees 252. Brilliant. She's selling 24 kilograms. She wants to sell 24 kilograms at this price. 
if you had done it then she would have got 1752 as profit she is not able to she discounts and sells this and therefore makes 744 now what do we need to find the amount in rupees that she had spent in buying Apple to find this amount she spent in that for which I think we'll have to use this 7c equal to 30p equal to 9a I'm going to make this to be equal to some other number to get the ratio and so 7 and 30 are co-prime 7 into 30 is 210 another 3 here which takes us to 630 I'm going to call this equal to 630k or c price of cashew 630 by 7 90k price of peanuts is 630 by 30 63 by 3 21k price of diamond 630 by 9 70k the per unit pricing is in the ratio 90 is to 21 is to 70 90k 21k 70k that's a per unit pricing right? so, and then we'll have to do 20, into 24 kilograms. Think about profit, profit going to 1752, and then come back to this a proper pain in the neck. Right? So, but let's attack it. So I'm going to rewrite this question. Cashews 4 kilograms, peanuts 14 kilograms, almonds 6 kilograms per kg on a per kg price. Price per kilogram. This is 90k. 21k 70k 90k 21k 70k so how much does she spend she spent total of 360k 14 into 21 14 ones are 14 4 1 14 twos are 20 14 twos are 28 14 29 294 this is 420 we add these three this is 4 11 Plus 6, 17, 7, 1, 4 plus 2, 6 plus 4, 10, 1074K. That's a total amount of money she spent, of which Ammons alone is 420. Nice. Now she's we still not done it. We, thought, we need to find the amount of money she has spent. This amount of money she has spent, and then she makes the total amount of profit she makes. This the total cost oh, sorry what do we do here give me a second total makes a profit of 1752 by marking it up uh, at 252 per kilogram so 252 into 24 is the total selling price and then our total profits is 1752 Subtract this from this, we'll get total cost price. That number equal to 1074k. From that, we'll have to find 420k, which happens to be the amount of money she spent in buying amounts. So it's a right royal pain, pain in the neck. So let's figure this out. 280, 294, everything seems to be fine so far. I don't think we've made any computation mistake yet. So 252 into 24, 24 twos are 48, 8, 4. 120, 124, 4, 12, 48, 60, 6, 0, 4, 8, minus 1752. This is 8 minus 2 is 6, 3 minus 5 is 9, 9 minus 7 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3, 5 minus 1 is 4, so 4296. Our total cost price is 4296. And that, that is 1074k. We need to find 420k. Our cost of all the, all the almonds is 420 by 1074 into 4296. This is a lovely idea here. 74 into 4. 7 to 70 into 4 is 280 plus 16 to 96. Lovely. This by this is 4. 420 by 4 is 840 into 2, 1680. Finally, we get lucky. 1680. Absolutely painful, really brute force question. We've taken this question in the exam. We're in for it. I tried for a bunch of iterations. 
and trying to get cute methods. I didn't find any cute method. I doubled down and said, look, there aren't any cute methods. Let me put fight, let me hang in there and do something. And then I, I, I brute forced my way into step by step getting this ratio, plugging this ratio back in, finding the overall cost, finding the mark price, then doing the whole chiban. Super tough question. The largest real value of A for which the equation modulus of x plus A plus modulus of x minus 1 equal to 2 has an infinite number of solutions for x. Nice. Nice simple question. And so we have x here and 1 here. This is modulus of x minus 1. Modulus of x minus 1 is nothing but the distance between x and 1. It's an infinite number of solutions. Modulus of x minus 1 plus modulus of x plus a equal to 2. We will think about x plus a. This as modulus of x minus minus a. And so it will have infinite solutions. So if minus a were here, x could be here, 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 put x equal to 2. And so now think about it. When will it have infinite solutions? First of all, between 1 and minus a, the, the distance should be not 5 or 15 or 20, it should be small, right? because this is modulus of x minus 1, this is modulus of x plus a, if minus a were 100, this distance itself is 99, it has infinite number of solutions, that gives us one beautiful getaway, it tells us that x should sit between 1 and minus a. We have 1 here, have minus a here, this distance should be 2, x being anywhere here, this plus this will be 2 or minus a could be here, this distance being 2, x being anywhere here, this distance plus this distance would be 2 and that is the kind of scenario we are looking for. And well, Otherwise, there will be a, a unique number of solutions, so values for which it will work. And an infinite number of solutions, they are basically saying x, sh we should be able to say x can be anywhere between 1 and a and this will work. Anywhere between 1 and a it will work, the distance will be 2. That means x is bang in between 1 and a. And the distance between 1 and a is 2. Sorry, not 1 and a, 1 and minus a. Or minus a could be 3, minus a could be minus 1 a is 1 or a is minus 3. Both of these will be possible. So, we are either thinking x lies between 1 and 3 or thinking x lies between minus 1 and 1. So, a is minus 3 or a is 1. Largest real value is 1. Minus 3 is not available. 1 works. So, we are basically looking at a to be 2 units from 1. The system between x and 1 is given. If x if 1 and a were 2 units apart, then x can be anywhere in between, this will hold good, we will have an infinite number of solutions. And so, the more algebraic way of doing it, saying I denote the turning points as minus a and plus 1. We know that mod x equal to x, if x is greater than or equal to 0, to minus x if x is less than 0. We are basically saying, I can say this x plus a plus x minus 1 equal to 2. That is one possibility. Where this is positive, this is positive. Or minus x minus a minus x plus 1 equal to 2. That both are negative. Or x plus a plus 1 minus x equal to 2. Or minus x minus a plus x minus 1 equal to 2. You solve for this, we get 2x equal to 3 minus a, we get two solutions. We get minus 2x equal to 1 plus a, we get two solutions. You solve for this, a plus 1 equal to 2, a is 1. You solve for this, we get minus a equal to 3, a is minus 3. If a were 1, if a were minus 3, any x will hold good here. That's what you are solving for. Therefore, a could be 1 or minus 3, largest value is 1. That's the algebraic brute force way of solving it. And again, a beautiful method, but the, the longer method works better. The visual method works better. The trapezium ABCD has AD parallel to BC. AD, BC. Angle PAD is 90. Let's say AD, 
BAD is 19. BC is 3 and AD is 8. So BC is 3, don't have AD here. AD is 8. Nice. The perimeter of the trapezium is 36. Nice. 3 plus 8 is a given. I'm going to draw a line like this. Call it E. This is 3. AD is 5. 3 plus 3 is a given. I'm going to add this and this. Call this as height H. Call this as H. This is Pythagoras theorem. It looks like it's an integer. 5, 12, 13 works best. So put 12, put 13, put 12, see if it works. 12 plus 13 is 25, plus 3 is 28, plus 8 is 36. Get done. 5, 12, 13, Pythagorean triplet just fits naturally inside. We are through. What is the area in square centimeters? Area of this rectangle is 3 into 12, 36. This so is half into 5 into 12, this is 30. 36 plus 30 is 66 square centimeters. Half into base into height, length into breadth. 66 square centimeters, we are through. For any real number x, let box of x be the largest integer less than or equal to x. If sigma n equal to 1 to n, sum of 1 by 5 plus n by 25 equal to 25, then n is. I don't understand these kind of questions, so I brute force them. What do I do? I put n equal to 3. So it means box of 1 by 5 plus 1 by 25 plus 1 by 5 plus 2 by 25 plus 1 by 5 plus 3 by 25. This is 0, 0, 0. This will be 0. When will this fellow is the largest integer less than or equal to x? That is, this greatest integer of 0.99999 is 0. Of 1.00001 is 1. Greatest integer of 1 is 1. When does it become 1? 1 by 5 here, this should be 4 by 5. If n were 20, that's when it will go to 1. Or, if I put capital N equal to 20, 1 by 5 plus 1 by 25, 1 by 5 plus 2 by 25, 1 by 5 plus 3 by 25, all of them will be 0. 1 by 5 plus 20 by 25 will be 1. So if capital N were 20, this whole sigma thing, whatever this is, that will be 1. That's when it goes to 1. We want it to be 25. So what will I do? So it will be more than 20. Maybe I'll use 21 also. And this is 1 by 5. 1 by 5 plus 20 by 25. Greatest integer of this is 1. 1 by 5 plus 21 by 25. Greatest integer will be 1. Why? Slightly more than 1. Through. This is 1 by 5. This should become 2. So I'm going to solve for 1 by 5 plus x by 25 equal to 2. Or x by 25 should be 9 by 5 x should be 45. When x goes to 45, it will become 2. Till then, it will be 1. I put 25, 26, starting from 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, till 44, it will be 1. So, I suppose I put, therefore, now if I put capital N equal to 44, and I am adding from N equal to 1 to 44. 1 to 19, there is nothing. 1 by 5, 1 by 5 plus 20 by 25, 1 by 5 plus 21 by 25, all the way to 1 by 5 plus 44 by 25, all of these give us 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 each, how many terms are there, 25 terms are there, if I put 45 by 25, it will go to 2. I put n equal to 45 from 45 onwards 45 46 47 all the way till 69 it will be 2 we we'll keep adding 2 to each sum how many terms are there 25 terms are there or when n equal to 44 the summation equal to 25 n is 44 beautiful question so how will this work suppose we had to do this as a function we call this f of n and so f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, all the way till f of 19 would be 0, f of 20 would be 1, f of 21 would be 2, f of 22 would be 3, f of 22 would be 4, f of 44 would be 25, f of 45 will become 27, 29, keep adding, when does it become 25, it becomes 25 and n is 44.
greatest integer function is a beautiful function think about it in a village the ratio of number of males to females is 5 is to 4 nice males females 5x 4x the ratio of number of literate males to literate females is 2 is to 3 2y 3y ratio of number of illiterate males to illiterate females is 4 is to 3 4z 3z 3600 males in the village are literate this is 3600 that means this is 5400 then the total number of females in the village we need to find 4x we know this is 3600 this is 5400 we know 3600 plus 4z 3600 plus 4z by 5400 plus 2z is equal to 5 by 4 5400 plus 3z this plus this is to this plus this is 5 is to 4 solve for that we should get z then we'll go step by step and find and include y find x all of it the total number of females in the village we need to find this number we need to find 3y plus 3z right? lovely how do we do this cross multiplying this is 14400 plus 16z is 5400 into 5 just 27000 plus 15z z equals 27,000 minus 14,400 this is 600 6 minus 4 is 2 12,600 is z what do we need to find out total number of females in the village 5,400 plus 3z we need to 3 times this into 3 78 3 37,800 plus 5,400 Zero zero two eight plus five three forty three thousand two hundred females are there totally in this place. That's a nice beautiful ratios question. Write down the data properly, and then you're through. Answer is forty three thousand two hundred. Amal buys hundred and ten kilograms of syrup and one twenty kilograms of juice. So syrup hundred and ten kgs, juice hundred kilogram. Syrup being 20% less costly than juice per kilogram. So price per kilogram, this is 0.8x, this is x. He sells 10 kg of syrup at 10% profit and 20 kg of juice at 20% profit. So he sells 10 kilograms at 0.88x, 20 kilograms at 1.2x. So he gets 8.8x plus 24x. X being the price per kilogram of juice. Mixing the remaining juice and syrup. Remaining juice and syrup, that is what is remaining from 110 years sold 10. So he has 100 kgs of this. 120 kilograms of juice he had to start with. This is 120. He sells 20. 100 kilograms of juice. Nice. This is a beautiful number. 100 kgs of syrup, 100 kgs of juice. He mixes the remaining and sells the mixture at 308.32 per kilogram. Makes an overall profit of 64%. Remaining. He makes an overall profit of 64%. Beautiful. So, what is his overall cost? Overall cost is 110 into 0.8, which is 88x plus 120 into x, 120x. This plus this is 208x. Overall cost, overall profit is 64%. So overall selling price, let's say, is 208 into 1.64 x. 64% profit, cost price into 1.64 should be selling price. I don't have a great fashionable method for this. I'm going to brute force this. 4 8s are 32, 2, 3, 8, 32, 6 8s are 48, 8, 4, 1, 2, 4, 8, 2, 0, 8, 2, 1, 
he gets 341.12x this is his overall selling price he has made this much money now he's already made this much by selling this 10 kg and 20 kg that adds up to 32.8x so we'll take that from here we'll subtract 32.8x nice this is the remaining selling price selling price of the remaining what is remaining 100 kgs of syrup and 100 kgs of juice I'll practice from this this is 2 11 minus 8 is 3 10 minus 2 is 8 this is 0 308.32 x nice brilliant i'm really glad my eyes lit up when i saw this number because i've seen this what is this equal to? It is 308.32 into 200. Why 200? The per kilogram cost is the selling at 308.32 per kilogram. How many kilograms does he sell? 200 kilograms. Why? That's what is remaining. 100 plus, plus 120 sells off 30. There's 200 kilograms remaining. That much 308.32 into 200 is 308.32x. Really glad to see this x is 200 or the per kg cost of juice is 200x amal's cost price for syrup in rupees per kilogram is 0.8x 0.8 into 200 160 pain in the neck question because it's so time consuming to be very careful with detail just going over this one more time cost is 0.8x and x total quantity is 110 and 120 10 kilograms are sold at this 20 kilograms sold at this total price realized and selling price realized is this much total cost price is 110 into 0.8 plus 120 into x this much what is remaining is 100 of each profit is 164 percent or total selling price is realized is 208x into 1.64 which is this of which the first 30 kilograms gives us this remaining is this that remaining should be should have got been got by selling 200 kilograms of the mixture at this price Thankfully, we have 308.32, a pesky 308.32 on both sides that goes away. We get excess 200, 0.8x is 160. A square plus AB plus A is 14. B square plus AB plus B is 15. These questions are painful. The only thing that's giving my sanity here is A and B be natural numbers. That's very nice, beautiful to get. What do we do? We add both of these. Get a square plus 2ab plus b square plus a plus b is 42. Or a plus b whole square plus a plus b is 42. a plus b into a plus b plus 1 is 42. We put a plus b as x, x into x plus 1 is 42, or consecutive natural number 6 into 7 is 42 a plus b is 6 this cannot be 3 and 3 because then these two will give us the same answer a appears to be smaller this is a square and a this is b square and b it becomes double so a appears to be smaller that's all put a as 2 put a as 2 b as 4 2 square plus 2 into 4 plus 2 4 plus 8 plus 2 14 yep that works a is 2 b is 4 that should work so what is 2a plus b 2 into 2 4 plus 4 8 yeah. if we add these two we get a plus b a plus b is 6 3 comma 3 doesn't work 2 comma 4 should work and then we are through we can solve this we can say a is 6 minus b substitute that here get that quadratic solve and get a that's the other more algebraic method we can snap out of it and simplify this alex invested in two parts so simple interest earned in the first part at 15 percent annum for four years simple interest 15 percent into four years is the same as a simple interest earned in the second part at 12 percent for three years so this um principle 1 into this equals principle 2 into this p1 into 0 0.6 
is P2 into 0.36. Listen to 60 is that into 36. Listen to 5 is that into 3 are the ratio of the principles. It's 5 is to 3, 5k and 3k. Then the percentage of savings invested in the first part. So the ratio is 5 is to 3. Sorry, P into 0.6 is P2 into 0.36. So sorry, it's not 5 is to 3. P1 by P2 is 3 is to 5. 3k is to 5k. P into 5, P1 into 5 is P2 into 3. Or P1 is to P2 is 3 into 5. 3 into 5 is 5 into 3. P1 is to P2 is 3 is to 5. And the percentage of savings invested in the first part is 3 by 8. 3, 8 is invested. 1 by 8 is 12 and a half. 3 by 8 is 35. If I had written the other way around, I would have got this answer. I got myself minus 1 instead of plus 3. And so, jotting down to old age, you should get it right. In a class of 100 students, 73 like coffee, 80 like tea, and 52 like lemonade. It may be possible that some students do not like any of these three drinks. The difference between the maximum and minimum possible number of students who like all the three drinks is a pain in the neck question. It's a very tough, very time consuming. Anytime we have maximum and minimum at set theory, we should say, hey, maybe I'll stay a couple of steps away from this. If it's three questions or two questions, it's reasonable. It's just one. And we have maximum and minimum. We find the difference. Pain, not worth it. Coffee is 73. Tea is 80. Lemonade is 52. Totally there are 100. Simple rule of thumb. Add these three. 73 plus 80 plus 52. Right. If it is less than 100, then life is easy. That means that lot numbers here, life becomes super easy. That will generally not be the case. 73 plus 52 is 75 plus 50, 125. Plus 80, 205. It's more than twice of this. And so that straight away says, got to be somebody sitting here. This cannot go to zero. Right? Because if you put the numbers here, here and here, each number will get double counted. Even after double counting, it won't hit this 205. So how do we do this? It's a very beautiful algebraic method for this. Call this as y1, y2, y3. Call this number as x. Outside let it be p. Right? Now if I add c, t and l, that is coffee, tea and lemonade. I'm, I'm interested in finding coffee union tea union lemonade this number is 100 minus p chances are we'll put p as 0 and then simplify this but i still want to put p because they said some students do not like any of these three traits that's given so 100 minus p my starting point is add coffee add tea add lemonade i'm going to do that if i do that then this gets added twice this appears in coffee and tea this appears in tea and lemonade this appears in coffee and lemonade and this fellow gets added thrice. And so, this 100 minus P, which is coffee union T union lemonade, should be equal to coffee plus T, which is 80, plus lemonade minus Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 minus 2X. I'm subtracting these because they have appeared double. I'm doubly subtracting that X because it has appeared triple. We do minus A intersection B, minus B intersection C, minus A intersection A, plus A intersection B intersection C. We do minus of Y1 plus X, minus of Y2 plus X, minus of Y3 plus X. X completely disappears. We add X back. Instead of that, we can say minus of Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3, minus 2X. Nice. Brilliant. 73 plus 80 plus 52 is 205. We already found that out. So, 205 minus 100 is 105. So, I'm going to write this equation again 100 minus p is 205 minus that y1 plus y2 plus y3 i'm calling it as y minus 2x or 2x plus y minus p is 105 and what are we interested in we want to find the maximum value of x and the minimum value of x x plus y plus p. I can rewrite it like this. And so, 
You want to find a maximum value of x. What can the maximum value of x be? Can we put x as 52? And so 52 into 204 plus 1 is 105. P is 0, 105. Can x be 52? You put x as 52 here. Y is 1. These two cannot be 1. But I can put 1 here. And then solve this entire thing. Remove 52 from this. From 100 we will remove 52. That will take us to 48. This 1 goes away. 49. Sorry, 47. These two add up to 47. Should be possible. Because the entire 52 is taken away. Number is simpler. Should be possible. So x maximum is 52. I put x as 52, everything works out rather well. I cannot put x as 53 because first of all, my lemonade number is only 52. If I put x as 53, y has to be negative. That's not possible. I cannot have y being negative. Right? If I, at the same time, if you put x as 53 and put p as 1, outside as 1. The moment I put x as 53, my lemonade constraint goes off. It cannot be more than 52. With 52, I am able to work it and through. Then x maximum is 52 x minimum it should be as low as possible right for that the best case scenario is put p as 0 2x plus y equal to 105 put x as 0 y should be 105 so look at the diagram y cannot be 105 there are only 100 people remain these three cannot add up to 105 that's not possible so the maximum we can go is for y to be 100 Put y to be 100, x has to be 2.5, that's not possible. But if you put x as 3, y as 99, y is not 100, but x plus y is 102, that's not possible. This plus this cannot add up to 102, only really 100 people are there. So x cannot be 3 either. So you have to keep in mind that x plus y is less than or equal to 100. If we keep that also in mind, we say, hey, if, if I keep x as 3, it doesn't work. If I put x as for every one unit I increase x, I can decrease y by 2. So I have to decrease the total by 5. I take x, x, by, x up by 5. x goes to 5. 2 into 5 is 10. y goes to 95. 2 into 5 plus 95 is 105. x plus y is 100. That can work or x minimum is fine, maximum is 52, minimum is fine, difference is 47, long thing, super tough question, utterly, pointlessly time consuming question, from an exam context you say, oh nice question, beautiful, I'll do it after the exam, leave it and come, and finding maximum, minimum in this context is, getting the funda right, getting the idea right, putting the numbers in right, getting the detail right, and getting to the final value right, the whole rigmarole is going to take time, probably say, hey nice, but I'm not touching it. For any natural number n, suppose the sum of the first n terms in arithmetic progression is n plus 2n square. If the nth term of the progression is divisible by 9, then the smallest possible value of n is n plus 2n square. What I'm going to do, sum up to n terms is n plus 2n square. What I do, I'll find sum up to one term. This is 1 plus 2, which is 3. And sum up to two terms. 2 plus 2 into 2 is 4, 4 into 2 is 8, 4 plus 8 is 10. Come up to 3 terms. 3 plus 2 into 9 is 18, this is 21. Sum up to 4 terms is 4 plus 2 into 16 is 32. This is 36. Or the first term is 3. Second term is 10 minus 3, 7. Third term is 21 minus 10, 11. Fourth term is 15, and so on. Then first term, sum up to one term, two terms, subtract this, this minus this, that's a second term. This minus this, that's a third term. This minus this, that's a fourth term. So we've got our sequence. If the nth term of the progression is divisible by 9, the smallest possible value of n is 3, 7, 11, 15, didn't work, 19, 23, 27, this works, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7th term works. 
find s1 s2 s3 s4 with that we have found term 1 term 2 term 3 term 4 with that we know the ap write down the ap one term is multiple of 9 get juicy question simple question if all the vertices of a rectangle lie on a circle of radius r nice radius r if the perimeter of the rectangle is p is l b l b then the area of the rectangle is we need to find lb we know this is the right angle triangle so l square plus b square this is 2r so l square plus b square equals 4r square nice we know 2l plus 2b is equal to p or l plus b equal to p by 2 or l square plus b square plus 2lb equals p square by 4 subtract this from this 2lb equals p square by 4 minus 4r square and area of the rectangle is lb divided by this should be p square by 8 minus 2r square Divide this by 2 half of this p square by 8 minus 2 r square. Nice juicy question should just be knocking it off. The average weight of students in a class increases by 600 grams when some new students join the class. The average weight of the new students is 3 kilograms more than the average weight of the original students. And the ratio of the number of sides of Original students have this average. New set of students bring in an average of a plus 3. The weighted average now it becomes a plus 0.6 the weighted average is closer to this than that this difference is 0.6 this difference is 2.4 like mixtures and allegations mix a and a plus 3 to get a plus 0.6 we should be mixing in the ratio 2.4 is to 0.6 or mixing in the ratio 4 is to 1 the ratio of number of original students to the number of new students, original to new, 4 is to 1. That, that classic question of weighted averages. Existing average, new guys, weighted average we are through. Ratio should be 4 is to 1. Let A be the largest positive integer that divides all numbers of the form 3 power k plus 4 power k plus 5 power k. B be the largest positive integer that divides all numbers of the form 4 power k plus 3 times 4 power k plus 4 power k plus 2. Where k is any positive integer. When a plus b, what do we do? We say we put k equal to 1. And you find 3 power k plus 4 power k plus 5 power k. So 3 plus 4 plus 5, 12. k equal to 2, 9, 16, 25. k equal to 3, 27. Plus 64 plus 125. This is 12. 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 plus 25 is 50. 9, 16, 6, 1, 3 plus 6, 9 plus 2, 11, 1, 2, 16. We can keep on going. So the A should be less than or equal to 12. This number is only 12. 12 does not divide this. 12 does not divide. Even 6 does not divide. This does not have a 3. It does not have a 4 either. Between these two, the highest common factor is 2. So 2 can divide all of these numbers. Yes, this is odd, this is odd, add up, it's odd. Odd, add plus odd is, odd plus odd is even, even plus even is even. This is an even number. So A can be 2. That part is done straight away. And so A, anything more than 2 is not possible. 4 is not possible, not a multiple of 4. 6 is not possible, not a multiple of 6. Out. Anything else doesn't divide this. So beautiful. So A is 2. Second one is more interesting because that's 4 par k, 4 par k, and also 4 par k into something. So we can extract a 4 par k out. We call it 4 par k, 3 into 4 car, 4 par k, plus 16 into 4 par k. Well, this is 4 par k into 1 plus 3 plus 16 into 20. The k is any positive integer. k could be 1, 2, 3. So if you put k as 1, this number is 80. k is 2, this is 320. 
the number any number into k is 3 it will be 320 into 4 k is 4 it will be 320 into 4 into 4 so always it's a multiple of 80 the largest positive integer that divides this for any k is 80 this number is always a multiple of 80 it is 4 power k into 20 k is at least 1 this gives us a 20 this, this gives us a 4 so the smallest number the largest number that will divide this always is 80 k is 1 it is 80 anything more will be more than 80 and so, so 80 is definitely in the number a is 2 b is 80 and these two we get a plus b to be 82 f of x equal to modulus of x minus pay modulus of plus modulus of x minus 100 plus modulus of x minus a minus 50 distance between x and a distance between x and 100 distance between x and a plus 50 the maximum value of f of x becomes 100 when a is equal to and so very nice so let's put 0 a x 100 and so first of all the maximum value possible in this function this is modulus of x minus a this is modulus of x minus 100 or 100 minus x either way it won't matter and then modulus of x minus of a plus 50 and a plus 50 we are count subtracting uh, x or from x we are subtracting a plus 50 and so this is the function f of x is modulus of x minus a plus modulus of 100 minus x plus modulus of x minus a minus 50 when will this be maximum for a given a right? for a given a this is 100 minus a be maximum when x is 100 because x minus a minus 50 is remaining or a plus 50 minus x is remaining one of these two and so x pl a plus 50 could be so small that x minus a plus 50 is remaining or a plus 50 is large but x is even larger from x to a plus 50 that distance is remaining that is the remaining distance that we need to calculate finally we need to include distance between x and a plus 50 nice this is built in always equal to 100 minus a maximum distance between x and a plus 50 that will be the maximum of 100 plus x distance between x and a plus 50 plus 100 minus a is equal to f of x 100 minus a is this and this adds up to 100 minus a right? and distance between x comma a plus 50 plus 100 minus a is f of x the maximum possible value of f of x becomes 100 when a is equal to so maximum possible value of f of x becomes 100 so that means distance between x and a plus 50 remember a plus 50 could be higher than x or x could be higher than a plus 50 and so when x is higher than a plus 50 the maximum value would be when x is 100 and so and a plus 50 is some value we find that out and, and, and come back the when, when a plus 50 is less than x when a plus 50 is this side distance between x and a plus 50 is once again when x is 100 when a plus 50 is higher than x when x is lesser and lesser right? that's when that's when this happens now the maximum distance between x and a plus 50 a and a plus 50 lie somewhere x is more than a if it is less than a plus 50 i put x at a that's when that distance will be 50 that's the maximum i can have put x at a distance between x and a plus 50 can be as high as possible x cannot go below a so the maximum difference between x and a plus 50 is 50 that's the maximum possible and so it cannot be more than 50 if because x cannot be less than a that much we know a and a plus 50 distance is 50 if x were greater than a plus 50 then we'll have 0 a a plus 50 x then x and a plus 50 cannot have a distance of 50 why because x if a plus 50 were 50 x would be 100 that's not possible because a plus 100 will, will be more than 100 because 0 less than or equal to a so the maximum distance this this value maximum would be 50 when x is at a 
and a to a plus 50 distance is 50. So this maximum is 50 or when the maximum goes to 100, 100 is equal to 50 plus 100 minus a or this maximum is when a is equal to 50. When we have a scenario where 0, 50, 100 and x is in between 50 and 100, in that case the maximum value of f of x will be 100 minus a plus x minus of a plus 50, in which case the, when x is 50, that's when the maximum will reach out to 100. Absolutely delightful question, super difficult, super tough, super tough. Right? So we have to reframe this modulus of p minus q is the distance between p and q on the number line. That's a funda. You grab onto that bunch of these questions become that little bit more doable and that's something that we should look to grab onto.